Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good morning to everyone here who's watching me. I um, hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend. I wanted to put this video together in order to show you what I have been doing here in the room. Okay, so I know we have been talking about acoustic panels. So here are the Vicoustics uh, panels, which are really, really cool. Uh, because you can use them as absorbers as well as diffusers okay so take a look at them right now this would be the diffuser side and the great thing about it as you will see in one of future videos is that if I wanted to use it see they spin I can spin them and use them I'll put them on my two hands but yeah I can spin them and so basically the back is a an absorber basically so i can use them depending on my needs in the room and i think that i love that flexibility that these panels have now that's it i'm still waiting for a base for the third which for the third base that will go here unfortunately i have not put it together yet so i'm waiting for that but i have the two on the back and I have this one for my first reflection point, okay? So I am working in the room, and I also aligned the ones behind my listening chair, as you can see. I still got two more to mount, so everything is getting better. I am actually going to be hanging this on this door here that allows me to, this is the door that I used to uh, bring all the equipment inside my room. So this one is gonna go hanging on that door to help. Um, and so yeah, there are a lot of moving pieces happening right now in my room, a lot of treatment. Okay, so there's a lot going on right now. Okay, more to come on the panels. I am going to actually let me just add a quick clip right now. So you guys can see some of the fun that I was having. Talk about it. What do you want me talk to talk to, about? Talk, talk to my uh, YouTube channel here about so the... they were they were slightly tougher, but we managed to get it. Teamwork is uh, the best way to do it. You definitely want two people on the job. Um, they are they are tight. They are meant to be tight because you want some some anti vibration going on, especially that they're base traps. But as you can see, you know once you have them in, while it's snug, because you don't want these panels moving around, it is easy to pivot them once. There. So you have absorption. You've got diffusion. You can then do absorption here, or however you want to, to configure it. You can do all absorption, or you can do all diffusion. And relatively simple, once you've gone through the painstaking task of getting them all in, in line. So a lot of they work. Are, they are tough to get in. They're yeah. tough to get in, but uh, we have yet to determine the improvements that we are going to hear with the Wilson Audio XLF. Here is the next one getting together. That one was actually, let's see, let me try if I can get out a little more for you guys to see. Okay, so that goes right there. There you so go. That was, that was simple the, enough. The challenge one, the one that's challenging is the top one, the third level. Yes. So that one is the one that takes a little bit of work. Of course, this one is going in perfectly. Perfectly. Right. And the last one was, I had to we put had to get a rubber mallet. We had to put a rubber mallet on there, and then 260 pounds for me. And how 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 much do you weigh? About 200. 200. So we had to put about 460 pounds downward well, pressure. Know. We we didn't we didn't we didn't hang we didn't, hang, we, didn't <laughs> we didn't we didn't hang from him. But yeah yeah. So, but once this gets completed here. The goal will be to put one on both sides, right behind the speaker and on the other corner. There you go. There we go. Okay, so this is where I'm, we'll see what happens when you do it with one yeah. person. Uh, quite a challenge to be honest, but uh, it was a lot of fun and I was working with Juan who works for Focal Name as a uh, rep. Uh, great guy to work with, by the way. A lot of fun. He helped me a lot here with the uh, panels and putting them together. So um, big uh, shout out to um, Juan. Anyway, that said, a couple of other things happening right now. So let's go over those. More tweaks. Jay is in tweak mode right now. <laughs> All right. So in case you wanted to know, 
here is something that I am going to be talking about. Audio, this, these are the synergistic research orange fuses. Seven of them. Okay, so two have been installed on the Antillian. One is already installed on the Essence. I need to do the ones on the Pandora preamplifier, which is two, one per side. And I also need to do two on the DCS along with the DCS clock. That has not been done. I want to make sure I am clear. I will not be changing fuses on the preamplifier or the DAC, the DCS DAC, until after the shootout. Okay? I want to make sure you guys understand because I want no variables here. I want to help nobody. I want to make everything pretty fair and square. Okay, so these fuses, guys, um, they actually, right now, I know some of you guys do not believe in fuses, myself included, um, but I, I got to give you a high-level overview. I mean, I am quite impressed at the difference that it has made with me, uh, m with my uh, Griffin Antillian. I mean, I do, I do feel it opened up more clarity. Uh, the bass is better. Um, there is more happening guys. I got to tell you these fuses right now. I don't want to speak too much about them. I want you all to hear the before and after effects of the fuse. Um, but what I wanted to tell you is they are directional. So you have to insert them into the back of the amp or preamp or whatever. Insert them one way and listen. And then you insert them the other way and then listen again. And then you choose whichever uh, position it sounded best to you. Okay, so uh, there is unfortunately no way of knowing until you try each uh, fuse. For now, I think I, I already have the Antillian uh, with the fuses inserted correctly. Uh, at least my ears are telling me that. And also the essence. Okay, I do believe the fuses help. Um, I do not know if it will be the same improvement for every component. This is why I still need to do my preamplifier as well as my DCS DAC with the clock in order to more or less give you guys some ideas of, um, you know, the improvements, the overall sonic benefit from using the synergistic research orange fuses. Okay, so um, yeah, so more to come on that. All right, so let's circle back to the the xlf i'm still playing on casters i have not positioned them yet i still need to do um, these are my reference lines uh, more or less where every speaker i feel has sounded better and now i'm just marking them to try to understand there's like about six inches between this line and the other line and then the other line more or less so what i do is i typically go back with it or forward uh, and maybe slightly to the right or to the left in order to see how the mid uh, mid range gets uh, in between the speakers as I put them closer or as I spread them apart. As you spread them apart, if you're going if you're going too far away from each speaker, uh, if the separation between each speaker, I'm sorry, is too much, you begin to lose that mid range purity. You begin to feel that it's not a, it's not one cohesive. Uh, there's no cohesiveness. Uh, to the mid-range when you put the speakers too far away from each other so as you bring them in you begin to feel as if the mids begin to lock in the middle better there's more body more clarity and that's an indication of when you're putting the speakers with the proper distance between each other okay um in terms of the bass with the xlf i do feel um and this is pretty interesting because i haven't talked about this so when I put them in here, this puts me at approximately, um, I want to say about 10 feet away from my listening position. I get a lot of uh, bass here, beautiful bass, a lot of uh, a bigger sound stage because the speaker, of course, is closer to me. Um, as I go back, what I find is the bass is still there, but it begins to get a little less, which is funny, right? Because you're thinking, how is that possible? Jay, you're getting closer to the rear wall. Why are you getting less bass? It should be the other way around. That's why the port, that rear, that front firing port. So um, that is what begins to happen to me. So that port is essentially walking away from me, as I put it, as I begin to push the speakers back towards the wall. In my room, personally, that has been the best uh, setting on the speaker. I don't really think I like it rear ported, but now that I brought those acoustic panels, I may like it. I may try and circle back and see what effects uh, porting the speaker in the rear has uh, with the overall presentation. 
But going back to this, guys, so this is what I was saying. So typically here is where I like to put my my medium sized speakers. Uh, the Sasha sounded pretty good. Alexia sounded incredible right here. Um, I feel this this spot right here is perfect for that speaker. Uh, Martin Logan's that I had here sounded good. Uh, as I go back, I think that becomes more of a much more taller speaker, more more of the plain feel, more of the the plain feel uh, where they need to be. Right as I go back, it's because I think the speaker's taller, so I want to kind of measure to see what happens as I begin to distance myself from the speaker um, and seeing if maybe the presentation gets a little larger or smaller or less focused. Luckily with the XLF, as you can do, of course, with many other Wilson Audio speakers, you're still able to adjust all the modules at the top in order to compensate. Now, the one thing that I will say to you might be something that I find it a little painful with Wilson Audio speakers in general, um, especially with something this big, is that as I begin to distance myself from the speaker by walking it back, guess what i begin to lose a lot of the information or the or the feeling of righteousness the feeling of the right sound uh from the speaker because now i am out of time alignment so now i have to go to the back of the speaker and begin to look at the table and now adjust these things completely to see if maybe uh, I need to begin to try a different setting, a different spike on the rear of the speaker. That's the only painful thing about the this kind of speaker, okay? You walk in the back, what you're doing is you're essentially undoing the calibrated settings you already have when you place the speaker here or here. Remember that. So if here I am, let's say, 10 feet away from the speaker and I'm 12, I'm 11 feet away here, guess what? Yeah, of course the speaker is not going to sound right when I'm walking it here. Now the speaker, you broke whatever you did up here. Whatever setting you had up here, it was for this position. As you do it, as you move it back, now you have to go back and undo everything again at the top and look at the table and adjust it for this. So it takes more time with Wilson Audio speakers, but that's, you know, that's the name of the game. I mean, that's just the design of the speaker. Right? You need to you need to remember that with speakers like this. That wouldn't be the case with Magico. <laughs> or any other brand, you can just simply walk it back and sit back and listen again and see how you like the sound. Um, but it is what it is, okay? So, but now, circling back to what I was talking about, okay, casters. Yes, I'm very vocal. I was using casters because as I mentioned to you, I am still trying to understand where I like the bass first and foremost, which is the first important thing with Wilson is the bass. Try to make sure the bass module, the lower module of your Wilson speaker um, is, plays accurately for bass reproduction first and foremost. Okay, once you find the right balance with the bottom of the speaker, with the bottom end that grip, that punch, and it's to your liking and you're getting enough enough slam or dynamics or punch, whatever you want to call it, then you know you are where that, that bottom module is where it needs to be. Now it's a matter of working the top drivers with the tables they give you, the time alignment tables, and begin to measure to see how far you are. And now you begin to hear how great or bad this top por portion sounds, okay? And of course, the last step being the left and the right movement of the speaker to see where you like it best, to see what happens. Do you lose bass as you go in? Do you gain bass? Do you gain mid-range? Does it sound uh, smeared? Or That's kind of the final step. The final step is moving it right to left, right to left. First should be front to back so that you can get an understanding of the bass, um, of the fullness of the presentation. All right, so just a couple of notes, a couple of things that I wanted to highlight for the, of those of you who own Wilson Audio speakers. All right, so let's go over the casters. So casters right now are in place, but I bought I bought these puppies here for the speaker. All right, so these are Still Points Ultra Fives. All right, so these already come with the the right thread. Okay, so that is going to literally just thread on the bottom of the speaker and i have the spikes that will be inserted here to level the speaker completely so now we are going to do today hopefully 
I am going to put those puppies in place. They're going to be there. This is supposed to, according to a reviewer, it's supposed to take the speaker to another level. It's supposed to really, really enhance the presentation. The clarity of the speaker is going to be superior. The bass is going to be superior. And one thing I wanted to add, guys, um, remember right now, if you look at it, okay, think about it this way. Look how high up the speaker is from the carpet. When I put this in place, Okay, and once it's threaded, you're you're supposed to leave a gap between the cabinet and the still point of maybe uh, a couple of millimeters there, right? They're not supposed to be completely inserted. They're going to be roughly around there. Okay, think about how much lower the speaker will be now, right? Because, again, look, I can't look at this. You have an understanding. So now the speaker is going to sit much lower, which is going to be better because now the tweeter is not going to be so high up. It is going to allow for you to get more in line with the tweeter. Plus the top tweeter of the speaker is not gonna be so far up there either. And now it's gonna be a little lower and hopefully that is going to enhance the big sound stage, the depth and the perception of space that the speaker is capable of displaying. So I'm pretty, pretty excited to try these still points uh, fives. These are approximately, I want to say $700 each. So that's eight of them. So you do the math. So I bought 12 actually. All right. So four per speaker. So that's eight that I'm going to be inserting. And then I bought another four to try under another component. And what component that will be, I really do not know. Is it going to be, I'm sure it's going to be one of these, uh, but I really do not know what. So yeah, so anyway, now you have an idea of what's happening in my room, what's taking place, um, and all the moving pieces, okay? I hope you guys are as excited as I am. Uh, for now, that's all I got. Thank you for following me, and please do not forget to hit that subscribe button, okay? It means a lot to me. Have a great weekend, guys.